Okay. All right, well, let's start, everybody. As you know, the topic, skeletons in God's closet, which is going to actually take more than one week. We have There's a lot of skeletons that people seem to think, but today's is the devil. Where did he come from? Is he God's stepson, which he just kicked out? Did he create him evil and then send him to hell for being who he is? Or is he actually a fallen angel? So we're going to have the debate today. We've got two teams. Josh is leading the evil, created evil team. And Elmer and Kim are leading the angel. He was actually a fallen angel. So here's how it's going to roll. I gave each team one sheet of paper on the structure. Somewhere one of you are sitting on. Uh, so here's how it's going to go. This is all timed. <clears throat> First team, team one is Fallen Angel. You guys are going to go first. You have three minutes to present your thesis and uh, just your initial presentation. Then team two is going to do the same. And then team one, back at it. Now you're going to present your arguments. So I don't know how many points you have, three or four points. you got five minutes to deliver your points. And then team two, you have the next five minutes to deliver your points. So we're not, we haven't started arguing against each other yet. You're just giving your points. And then after those, you're going to get four minutes to argue against each other. Three. Each team. And then there's a cross-examination to where you get to actually ask questions and yell at each other a little. Um, and then at the end, we're going to have uh, your final statement at the very end and questions from the audience. All the while, we have three judges in the back, Elmer, Liz, and Marty. They're going to be judging you on uh, specific things. Um, shoot, I, I don't have my paper. But what are you? What are the things you're going to be judging? Organizationally, on? clarity, use of arguments, use of examples and facts, use of rebuttals, and presentation styles. Yep. So they're going to be <laughs> judging you on that. And so they're not going to be judging on whether they think what they believe their point is. They're just going to be judging on how well you delivered and did you support it with good evidence. So it, we're not really, it doesn't matter what you believe right now, it matters how you present what you believe. So I'll be the moderator. David's going to be keeping time. And David's going to give us 30 second warnings. So in 30 seconds he's going to go, or <laughs> he's going to say 30 seconds. And then as soon as the time's up, you're out. Kick rocks. Next guy up. So we need one person to come up now and do the thesis statement, and then team two thesis statement, and somebody's going to present the points. So we're not going to give you much time in between, so as they're talking, you guys got to be doing your planning and plan of attacks. Um, any questions before we get going? Comments? Something I missed? Anybody freaking out, scared? Good. Let's uncover these skeletons, shall we? All right, well, if we're ready, let's pray. We're going to allow team one to come on up. And you have three minutes to present your thesis statement. What do you believe? And then team two will come up. So without further ado, David, you ready? Yeah. Time this girl. David. Okay, so, uh, starting three minutes. okay, so we believe that Satan was created by God as a good angelic being who served in God's presence. Satan was taken over by his own pride and wished to be more than what God is and was later cast down from heaven. Why create something nearly perfect if they don't get to choose for themselves how they want to live? He gives them the choice to worship God or not. So just like us, God, when he made us, he gave us a choice to do free will. Like, why make us if he's just going to obligate us to worship him if we don't have the choice? Um, so we have a verse in Isaiah 14, uh, verse 12 to 17, and it says, um, okay, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down from the ground, you who weaken the nations? For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit alone on the mount of the congregation. In the recess of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. And real quick, quick we see that O Lucifer means shining one. So, um, it comes from a Latin word meaning light barrier. 
In Greek is Hills Foros, Hills Foros, something like that. And light barrier. In Latin, so which is translated into Lucifer, um, which is why we see how it says right here, Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, is talking about Lucifer being as an angel first when he started following his own flesh, he was cast out into heaven. I mean, cast out into earth, sorry. But yes, that is our thesis, and so, yes. Thank you, Kim. It was wrong. <laughs> All right, team number two. Team number two, Thesis Statement. Steve. Steve. Hey, time Steve, you like to stay a long time. <laughs> it's gone. Okay, uh, we believe that God created the yeah. devil evil mm -hmm. so that he can use him as a tool that plays a big part in his division plan. Divine plan. <laughs> Uh, Colossians 1 16 says, For in him all things were created, things in heaven and in earth, visible and invisible, whether throne or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. All right, so at this time, we're going to have the presentation of your arguments. So we're going to allow Team 1 to go. You have five minutes to present all of your arguments for your view. And you can have different people come up, or you can have one person up to you. Team Captain, you decide. David, you ready? Yeah, I have one. All right, so whenever, um, I have a question for you guys real quick. Do you guys have free will? Yeah. Okay. What has caused you? What has, what has caused you? Okay, having free will. What has caused you to do? Sin. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. So we're gonna read a verse real quick in Ezekiel 28, 12, verse 12 and 19. Okay. Son of man, take up a lamentation over the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. You had a seal of perfection, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carb, whatever, and gold. The workmanship of your setting and sockets was in you. On the day that you were created, they were prepared. You were the anointed cherub that covers, and I set you there, and you were upon the holy mountain of God. You walked up and down the midst of the stones of fire. You were perfect in your ways until the day that you were created, until iniquity was found in you. By the multitude of your merchandise, you were filled with violence in your midst, and you sinned. Therefore, I have cast you as profane, out of the mountain of God, and I have destroyed you, O covering cherub. From the midst of the stones of fire, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You have corrupted your wisdom. By the reason of your brightness, I cast you to the ground. I lay you before kings, that they may see you, and have defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trade. Therefore, I have brought fire from your midst. I have, it has devoured you, and I have turned you to ashes upon the earth in the light in the sight of all those to see you. Alright, so um so having the seal of perfection it says that he had like every diamond. He was one of the top closest one to God. Um he was uh it says that he was a cher cherubim cherubim which is one of there's like three different stages how angels are in heaven. Um they all have different names but cherubim was the top one, one of the top three, and it so says that um, he was, he wanted to have the same power as God. He wanted more. His free will was given to him when he started to follow the desires, well, his free will was given to him, and he started to follow the desires of his flesh. Most people will think that when talking in Ezekiel, they would think he's talking about a king here, um, but it's actually, if we, if we pay more close attention to it, <laughs> It could actually, when it says ruler in mind, when he described him as being perfect and blameless in all his ways. Um, 
The doctrine of original sin is muddled when one considers that the king of Tyre, Tyre is said to have been blameless from the day he was created. In contrast to the statement, King David wrote, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Mm-hmm. Um, Satan was sinless when he was created, but that could not be said of any early ruler, not even King David. Um, it, it is said that the king of Tyre was created instead of born. If the word born had been used, it would have certainly have ruled out Satan, but it's not the case. Um, the ruler of Tyre could not have been in the Garden of Eden, Satan was. When he, when he talked to Eve about the apple, how he um, tricked her into thinking it was something good, but it would cause her to sin also. Um, it seems strange that the king is described as being adorned with every yeah, precious seconds. every precious stone. Um, did he really have much wealth? If this were referring to king, it would seem to be exaggerating. And um, last one, the king was called a guardian cherub. This word would make it only instance in the Old Testament where the where that word was used in reference to a human. That seems unlikely when you study how the word sheriff is used in other contexts. So, yes, yeah, so time is down. You have five minutes to present your arguments. So this is not time for rebuttal, just to present your arguments. Rebuttal's next. So we'll see present your arguments. That's what you say you don't want to do. Next slide is attack. Okay. Okay, here we go, guys. Five minutes. Okay, we can see that the devil was created with... Uh, the, the devil was created. We have uh, two points. So the first one is First John 3, 8, which Monica is going to read for us. You got to say it loud, like you're mad. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And you can, op- you can also see on John 8, 44, chapter 8, verse 44. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Okay, so let's see that. Different, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna read this one. What we got down right here, John chapter eight, verse forty-four. He was a murderer from the beginning, and didn't abide in the truth. Abide. The definition of abide is a place of residence, so he couldn't even be in heaven. And in that case, he couldn't be in heaven. Uh, if we can go ahead and see Psalms 5 4. Psalms 5 4. For you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. Uh, so you can tell that he couldn't be at any point, shape, or form in heaven as a fallen angel due to the fact, due to the fact that God cannot be, or evil cannot dwell amongst God or in his presence at any point in time. That's our point. Yep. <laughs> All right, Josh. All right, Josh. Time is are we go. Using this? So Javier has this one point he wants to express. Okay, so if the devil was an angel, that means other angels can be devils as well, right? I'm talking to them right next to <laughs> oh, Sorry. Oh, my, just, like, just present your... Just present your... Yeah, so anyway, so I understand that he brought angels with them as demons. So can, it's like, I mean, can any other angels... Be, take his place too, or no? So it's pretty much, pretty much. He's trying to say is like, if it happens once, it can happen again. It's like if one angel can turn, another angel can turn, because they have the free will to do it. 
that's the way you guys are saying. But other than that, um, just to keep it going, um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that the Fallen Angel crew would try to present, and one of them is Revelations 12, 1 through 10. That's where it talks about John. It was revealed to him some wonders in the world. One of them, if you read it out of context, is that there was a big battle in heaven and against good and evil, and that couldn't happen. Because at the end, if you read it uh, from the very beginning, from verse 1, it talks, about, it talks about a woman that was clothed in the sun, clothed in the sun and bearing a, a, a about to give birth. Also, on verse 3, you talk about a seven-headed dragon with seven horns and blah, blah, blah. It's, you, you can definitely, you can definitely see it's all symbolic stuff. And then the out-of-context stuff, for which the team is going to try to argue, is, oh, a big war, good and evil up there. And guess what? If you, in the, in the Bibles, uh, the, following the Bible's consistency, if, John is talking a certain way, say symbolic or literal or pro uh, prophetic. He has to cons start a certain way and end the same way. So if he's talking about a woman dressed in sun and also a dragon, symbolic, woman, symbolic, and he has to end symbolic. There was never a war in heaven at the time that he was talking about. So of good and evil. So there was no demons up there, no, no fight up there at that point. Next up is Isaiah 14, 12. Isaiah 14, 12. Can you read that? He wasn't a fallen angel. He wasn't a fallen angel. Thank you, Mike. Sorry. Oh, no comments. Thank you. No comments. Thank you. How you are fallen from heaven, right? Yeah. O Liz, first son of the morning, how are you? you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. Perfect. So uh, this is their open thesis. They started with that saying, oh, Lucifer fallen from heaven, but out of context. If you read it from, <laughs> if you read it from, if you keep reading verse 15, whoever they're talking about will be brought down to the side of the pit. Side of the pit. If you keep, uh, if you keep the Bible consistent, 30 if, seconds. if you keep the Bible consistent in Revelations, you can definitely read that Satan was casted into the pit, not the side of the pit. So, um, verse 14, you can tell who God was sp is speaking to. Uh, you can tell, verse 4, you can, you can tell who God was speaking to. A proverb against the king of Babylon. Lucifer, the day star, the morning star, that's your argument. Up. Guess who ah. else? <laughs> yeah, but get, Thank you, guess Josh. What? I can finish <laughs> <one thing. laughs> Lucifer, the day star, the morning star, the high star. The day star, if you actually look at it, is the brightest star that stood out amongst all stars. He's talking about a king at that point. He's talking about a king of Babylon. That king was King Nebuchadnezzar. That king was King Nebuchadnezzar. He was reaching out for the heavens. He was reaching out for the heavens with his Tower of Babylon. What was what happened? Was struck down. He was struck down by God Himself, humbled because of his pride, and he was uh, struck down all the way to the side of the pit, not in the pit, which is his grave, all the way to the side of the pit. Now, there's more <coughs> points, but well, you're gonna get more. Huh? You get another chance. Oh, Thank I get you. Another chance. Oh, perfect. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. Well, that's where you do your cross examinations. Our title is God is Love and This. And uh, I guess uh, we're going to read out of uh, Colossians 1.16. What is it? Colossians 1.16. And I need somebody to read it. Colossians 1.16. Yeah, 
160. All right. For everything was created by him in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. That supports there. Alright, so yes, even though it supports theirs, it's saying if everything created through him and for him. So if we say God is love, how can he create evil? Right? We all say, oh, God is love, like, he's a justice God, everything, but we never say, oh, God is evil because he created it. Because we don't believe God created evil. He, he, cre he could have, he uses people or he uses everything for his benefit at the very at the very end um for example when um we look up in um so if he makes evil is he the author of evil which we will say he never is the author of evil um but he allows it to to happen for example in job um we see that job was a good faithful servant of god he was um a devoted person to god and what did he allow he allowed satan to test job through everything that he went through, all the chaos and everything, God didn't create it, but he allowed Satan to um, to create evil in all of his life. He lost all his richness, he lost all his family, but yet at the very end, he knew, he knew that Job was still going to follow God after everything he went through. And also we see um, in David when King um, Saul... Yeah, that was King Saul. Uh, when he was tempted by an evil spirit, when it says, um, I don't have it, but um, so it was. Does it? I don't think it necessarily means that it was God sent him the spirit, but it was a spirit. I mean, a spirit that God sent Himself, but it was a spirit that God allowed um, to test um, to test Saul, and then also. Um, when you guys read John eight forty four, it says real quick. I don't know, David, do you have that? I got it. Um. So it says, "You are your father, the devil, and you want to the desires of your father." <clears throat> my father. He was the murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks from his own nature, for he's a liar and the father of lies. We clearly, we clearly see that in the beginning it says um, he was a murderer from the beginning. So when it says from the beginning, it's not necessarily meaning from the devil's beginning, how we believe when he was an angel or when he got cast out into heaven. So your guys is also can be out of context because it's not necessarily um, saying what beginning is talking about. So that way it's also like, you know, it could mean the beginning when he got cast out from heaven is when he started sinning. And evil started occurring. So, yeah. Josh. Thank you. Thank you. All right, cross yeah. examination. <laughs> All right. So Kimberly said he was he uses people for the benefit of the uh, for the his benefit till the very end. Easily said and done. It's like any of you can change people to creations. Jeez, uh, God has a big plan. We can all agree on that, and we don't see it the beginning we don't see the end of it but he can see all of it he implements creates stuff to work in his plan to diverse stuff like judah he was created for one purpose what was that person purpose to betray jesus to betray jesus and put him to death for a greater purpose so was the devil the devil was created by god for one purpose because he knew one day he will create a creation that has a free will, not because angels don't have free will. They have one sole purpose, and that is to serve the Lord and His will. So He created the people with free will, have a choice, good and good, right? No, wrong. He created to have. Uh, he created the devil to introduce evil. He was like, so free will is choosing between good and evil. Because we can also agree that having a choice, having a choice for somebody to choose to love you is the greatest, the greatest gift that anybody can have or the greatest love that anybody can have. So that's why God created the devil. Now, I want to show you guys uh, something, something that I found in, it was very intriguing. When in Luke, no, not Luke. 
what was it? Yeah. <coughs> So, 2 Peter 2.4. In 2 Peter 2.4, it talks about how he's talking about angels being casted down and chained up and waiting for, casted down from the heaven, chained up, waiting for, waiting for judgment, right? And everybody's like, oh, it's clear as day right there. He's talking about angels. He was like, but you have to figure out in the Bible, different names rely, uh, um, different names have different meanings. I mean, not different names. Different uh, words have different meanings. Like angel, messenger of God. Correct? Who else are messengers of God? Pastors. Pastors are messengers of God. And if you want proof of that, if you want proof of that, um, that would be <clears throat> Oh, uh, Jesus uh, direct the angels and God blah blah Judah to Oh man, I am lost in my notes. <laughs> All right, so let's just go back to the subject. Uh, if we go to Revelations 2, 1. Revelations 2, 1. And you'll see in 2, 1, 8, 12, 18, Christ talks to John to write to the angel of uh, various churches. Uh, why would Jesus, why would it Jesus ask John to write to the angels? Why can't he just be like, hey, God, can you tell the angels? Because he has a direct line to the angels with God. So why would he ask John to give him orders pretty much to do something? If you look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelations, you never see uh, an instance where a man tells an angel what to do. Or a man gives a message to, uh, of authority to an angel to do something. You never see that. Uh, but you can tell that Wait angels, the messengers, angel, the messenger of God, meaning the pastors, meaning the pastors, he's giving a message to the pastors. So when it talks about casting down the angels from the heaven and chaining them up, he's talking about the pastors, all the, the fake pastors out there that are giving a false, uh, false, um, messages or false meanings. He's casting them down to uh, Hell, chaining them up and waiting for judgment after their death. That's what he's talking about. And that's pretty much all my my points. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Shut up, Josh. Yeah, <laughs> <you>. <laughs> <laughs> what well, oh, is that conclusion? Uh, what, what a strong way to finish oh, that. Conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> strong way to finish. Hey, you can do your whatever you want. Last three minutes. Conv hey, convince the judges. You're right. Okay. All right, time started. Three minutes. Great. So, your guys' whole foundation on God created the devil stands on in in the beginning, right? He was he was created evil from in the beginning. Which beginning are we talking about? Genesis or First John? The devil's beginning, his creation. And where are your facts? What are your facts? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I want to know where your. Uh, uh, hey, that's, that part's done. The result's done. Conclusion. Just stay there. Sit down. Just, you, no, you, no, just said, just say <laughs> you just said. Rob, you just said he could say whatever he wants. Yes, but so, not ask questions. But he can Okay, so, so uh, since there is no don't real facts questions. or statements in. It is um, the create in the beginning of the devil's creation since that is never said within the bible we can just completely ignore everything that they say because there is no statement there is no foundation facts on what they're saying it's all opinion it's all this is what i believe this is what i believe it's not based on anything um solid because it's just 
um, yeah, it's just in his belief, in his creation. There's no solid foundation in saying, yeah, it's, a, it's this beginning or that beginning. Because there's two beginnings that the Bible speaks about. And we got to be clear on which beginning that it says or it's just opinions or facts. Everything else is thrown up. Um, so that, that was your guys' entire um, foundation. And uh, what we believe is that uh, God created everything to have um, a choice. In the end, the devil chose what he wanted, and that's why he was casted down from um, heaven. He made that choice, and that's what made him get cast down. God didn't say, uh, created him for that purpose to be cast down. He made that choice to sin and be cast down. And he even said in Second Peter, I believe, two four, that um, the angels sin, mm -hmm. and those are the ones that um, he takes with him. So that's what that's what we believe, because that's where our facts are stated in the Bible, and it's clear that it says that an angel can sin. So um, your Psalms five four, where it says that um, God cannot dwell with an evil, um, the angels sin. So what what can you guys say about that? And that that's pretty much um, what we we believe is that the angel has been casted down. And it's biblical facts that it says that the angels sin, and that it's never clear on which beginning that it starts where he was um, a murderer and a thief. Sounds good. Thanks, Great. Great. So use the, use the time like just like that to just deliver your arguments, not to uh, expect questions in return. Well, that's what I asked. Well, that, that's that's, a, that's the rebuttal. A that's the rebuttal part. That's what I was asking. That's the rebuttal part. Anyways, next team. Final statement. Final statement. Monica. Uh, you ready to timer? Three minutes. Okay. So in conclusion, we believe that God created the devil for one purpose, to give human choices, to choose between good and evil. Because if not, we should know like the differences between good and evil, and after all, if God wasn't behind it, then who was? Because there is no greater powerful being than God. Hey, Monica. Thank you, Monica. All right, do we have any questions from the audience that you'd like to uh, ask these teams before we give the final points from the judges? Do they have the judges come up? No. No, like to... Not yet. Not yet. Well, I don't have questions. I just got comments. But I guess we're not doing that. You can. Well, let's get the points first. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Right up. Oh, yeah. shit. Cool. Well, my comments are at the top of the page. Okay. No, I'll let you. I can, you can say it. But let's give them their... Uh, Let's give them the final score, and then yeah. you can give them comments. All right, so we're going to tally these up for team number one and team number two. All right, team number two scored a total of 65. Team number one, of course, start a total of 60. <laughs> All right, thank you. What are you laughing for? <laughs> <laughs> All righty, and we have team number one. Scored a total of 55. Team number two, total of 60. Okay, and we have our last judge. And we'll let the judges give you some comments. Thank you. Uh, do you mind getting up the score? Take your tap. Not bad. Alright, as you know, this is our very first debate. 
so we didn't expect it to be perfect. It's a good start. I'm sure everybody was nervous. That's okay. Oh, shoot. I'm That's fine. That's fine. Whatever you got. Let me read. Uh, 65, 65. Okay, who's got 65? Oh, both? <laughs> there were two at 65 and one at 65. All right, well, we obviously. Anybody know how to count to get these together? Team two is the winner. Should we put it? No, I don't put losers. <laughs> All right, so we're going to give some comments. We have a couple minutes from the judges. Any comments on why you scored the way you did? Yeah, so team two, I think you guys, um, your whole premise was based on one thing that you did improve. The whole premise was based on that angels have free will. Uh, that's one. team one. That's I'm team sorry, one. Or team one. But you never proved it. You know what I mean? Like, you guys never actually proved scripturally that there's free will in angels so your whole premise was based on something that you didn't prove that's that's i think that's part of the issue on team two they did a great job or they they, they did a better job of disproving than proving so they did a good job of disproving you guys but they did a poor job of proving their own argument so that's that's how i feel about it any other comments from the judges? Um, yeah, I think like with team two, you guys lacked on um, proving God's character. Like a lot of the arguments against your point is that it makes God a bad person if he actually, or makes God, yeah, bad if he actually created devil for who he is. But I think you guys could have defended his character a little more. Um, and then same thing with team one, like with the free will thing. It all was based on angels having free will. So yeah, but good job, Melissa. Good stuff. Body, any comments? No, I agree with what Elmer said. The About team one oh. team presented. I think you guys did a good job in preparing like what their comebacks were gonna be, but you lacked like laying your foundation. So we're gonna have more. Just take it as a learning opportunity. Hopefully next time we get more help from the teams. I want to read a verse for you guys before we go out. So the goal is, the goal is to help to, for you guys to know why you believe what you believe. And this was a good time for you guys to challenge some of your beliefs. Um, some of you guys may have already taken a side. But always be open to what the scripture says even if you may you know, say something wrong. But this is, this, this is a verse that is going to help just guide you in, in doing this. Uh, it's 1 Peter 3.15. It says, um, But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. So it's you want to know why you believe what you believe. And that's part of why we're studying. Kimberly was bringing up Greek, you know, Josh was citing different sources, you know, all that stuff. This is why I believe what I believe. But always the way, nobody really cares what you believe if you do it poorly, if you present it poorly. So to present it in a way with gentleness and respect, which you guys did pretty good. I expected Josh to get a little more angry, but he didn't. <laughs> he, did, he did really well. So just think about when you present why you believe in Jesus to somebody who doesn't. You don't want to get in a heated argument. Oh, you're stupid. You should, you know, present it in a way with gentleness and respect. So we're going to be, uh, we're going to, the next classes, we're going to be discussing some of this. But that's it for today. Good job, guys. Well done. Well done. All right, so let's pray and we'll Good job, Kimmy. roll out. Great. <laughs> oh, my uh, Would you mind praying, Elmer? Yeah. All right, Elmer's going to uh, pray, guys. Pray.